Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Remember this thing? My A7 IV? Yeah, haven't used it in a while because I've been so excited about having the new setup in the Forerunner. It's rainy and shitty out today. I told you that. First things first, I get to go grocery shopping because we don't have shit to eat. And I just need to get it done right now because if I wait, then I won't be able to get anything else done today. I also really need to go to the chiropractor because shit's really stiff. I am sore from the little workout I did yesterday. Yay! I'm gonna be presenting you with some new stuff. Number one, it, look at how much space there is. Now, I've got my elbow resting on like my rib cage. I can't say my love handle anymore because there isn't that much of one there. <laughs> All right, so anywho, yeah, what I'm shooting on is my 14 millimeter F1.8 G Master lens. Yes, today I'm gonna bestow upon you footage from every one of my lenses. But right now, I'm starting with number one, and that is this 14 millimeter F1.8 G Master. Look at how much is in the screen, and I'm literally holding it like this right now. I have my thumb on my chin, and I have my middle finger on the lens hood. And look at how much is still in the shot. Pretty crazy, huh? Now if I held this out here, I mean, holy shit, you can get the entire room in there. So it's pretty amazing. A challenging lens though, in that I can't put any kind of filter on the front because of the way that it has that bulbous lens element in the front. So you can't put a filter on the front of the lens unless you get that big ass like boxy contraption that fits around the front of the lens and it's a big, you know, and I'm not doing that. I just have to be careful. <laughs> Scary, right? Okay, and you can also put stuff behind the lens and I'm not dicking around with that because what am I always whining about? Dust, shit on my sensor, shit on the back of the lens, shit inside the lens because of changing lenses. Now, obviously, Excessive as I am, I can't have a camera for every lens, so I never have to do a lens change. And knowing me, I'd probably still find a way to get dust and shit back there. Instead of sitting here blathering on about this, we're gonna go shopping. Well, you're not gonna go shopping. I'm gonna go shopping. I'm not gonna bring you with me because it's freaking pouring out and I'm not taking this out. So I just wanted to let you know sort of what the plan for the day was. Lens number one, 14 millimeter F1.8 G Master. What do you think? Be right back. Okay, I know I filmed the intro to today on the 14, and then I moved to the 35, but since I'm gonna do every view with me sitting here at my desk like this, I had to put the 14 back on. So you're seeing this kind of in, I'm filming this in, in out of order, but here I am, 14 millimeter, 1.8 G Master. And now I'll move to the 35. I am now on the 35, 1.4 G Master, I'm just going to do a like I'm not going to talk that much in all of these, but I'm going to put every freaking lens on here and I'm going to show you I'm sitting at the, the chair in my office. I have that as far into the corner as I can get it. And I had to move it up a little bit because, you know, I but it started to cut my head off. I knew I needed to raise it up a little bit. So now the lens is center of the lens is right about eye height, give or take. I'm going to do all the primes first, then I'm going to do so that's four primes. And then I'm going to do the four zoom lenses and I'm not going to be like, it's going to be ridiculous at some point because there's only so, so much I can move, but it'll give you an idea of how much you get. Okay. So you can already see what happens when I went to the 85, like how much out of frame I am. I'm sitting in the same exact spot. So I, I would literally have to, to go down like this really washes the background out though. Right. And keep in mind, I'm doing all these wide open. So the 14 was 1.8. The 35 is 1.4, this 85 is 1.4, and now we're gonna move up to the 90 2.8. Okay, so once again, I'm on the 90 f2.8 macro lens, and it was on manual focus, and I'm like, what the hell, there's no button. How do you use this thing again? And then I was like, oh, duh, that's right, you gotta, you gotta slide the, the little collar, I guess, up forward. So here I am at 90 millimeters, out of frame. I'd, I'd have to bend down again, and you can see that the, Background is washed out, but not nearly as washed out as that 85 1.4, but it still looks really good. Eye autofocus is banging on my eyeball, so we're good to go. That takes care of the primes. Again, we went 14 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 85 millimeter, 90 millimeter. Now we're going to pop down to the zooms and we're going to go to the 16 to 35. Okay, so we're right back to holy crap, look at it like 
my arms are fully extended and there's still plenty of room. Amazing. So now I'm on the 16 to 35 F2.8 G Master and I'm at 16. So I'm going to show you 16, then I'm going to jack it up to the 35. Okay, now you see 35. Kind of the same as that, but not nearly as bright because this only goes to 2.8 and the 35 G Master Prime is a 1.4. So you can see how having a faster lens with a wider aperture really makes a big difference in the light with nothing else changing. Okay, now I'm going to pop this off and we're going to go to the 24 to 70 G Master, which is also 2.8. Okay, here we are, 24 to 70, and my arms are out and they're still in the frame. That's not too bad. Don't forget, 24 millimeters is considered wide angle. It's not super wide, like 16 or 14, but it is still considered wide angle. So 24 millimeters, f2.8. Now I'm going to turn it up to 70. Okay, so you can see here I am at 70, f2.8, and I'm cut off a little bit, not nearly as much as the 85, which would have been the next step up. But you can still see if, if I actually moved the stand up and all that kind of stuff or drop the chair a little bit, I would be com completely in frame and it's all completely usable. Would you actually use that? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, you can see it's, it's blurred out behind me, but not nearly as much as that 85, you know, with that 1.4. So if you really wanted to blow the background out, you're gonna have to go prime. Okay, that's it. Now we're gonna jump up to the 70 to 200. Okay, so here we are now. We're on the 70 to 200 at the 200 end. And I just recorded everything and forgot to freaking hit record. So I didn't record any of it. Anyways, yeah, like my melon is barely in the frame. And yes, the background is blurred out, but you can't really see it because it's my big ass head that, that's taking up most of the frame. So again, this is the 200 side of the 70 to 200 version two at 2.8. Can't wait to get this 200 to 600 on there. It's gonna be kind of frightening. All right, let's do that. Okay, so we're at 200 millimeters on this 200 to 600, but I had to change all kinds of shit because it was so dark and I was too close. So now I have it set to like two meters to 10 meters. Yeah, see, it, it keeps taking me out of here. I can't put my hand up like that. Um, I had to change the ISO from 200 to 800. And of course, now that it's a 200, the f-stop is, is 6 point, or 5.6. Now, when I extend it out to 600, it's gonna be unviewable, but I'm gonna show you anyways, because it should be funny. I have to keep, I have to keep moving my head back because uh, it won't autofocus on me. It, it's got the, the focus on my entire melon right now as I move around. The other thing is that it is so heavy that the ball head gave way and it just started to sink. So I just had to really tighten it down and it still dipped and I'm, I'm just like waiting here like a cat ready to pounce as this thing might tip over. So let's move it to 600 and see what happens. Okay, it, it's kind of wavering in and out. It keeps going, I'm gonna stop moving, but it keeps, obviously it's, it's like hunting for focus. All right, there, I have my head jammed back against the back of this chair as hard as I can get it. I could still see it going in and out of focus. So this is 600 millimeters at F6.3 ISO 800. And I physically can't move my head back any more than it already is. And I can tell that it's, it's like hunting and stuff. So there you have it. I'm gonna turn this off and put a normal lens on now because this is incredibly aggravating, but this is the 200 to 600. <laughs> Ooh, okay, <laughs> and there you go. All right, so I put the 35 f1.4 back on and, and this is what you get. Now I do have the light turned up kind of bright and, and you can see the difference on how much light actually comes in here compared to that 200 to 600, which was at, again, f6.3 and we've got this 35 at f1.4 and I even turned the ISO back down to 200 and look at how bright this is. So that was just a fun little show and tell of, of all the lenses that I got. Uh, the collection, I'd say, is done. There isn't any other lens that I want. Now, I know you've heard me say that before, but I will say this. I'm gonna list them out again, one last time. So I have the 16 to 35 F2.8 G Master, the 24 to 70 F2.8 G Master, the 70 to 200 F2.8 version two G Master, the 200 to 600 G lens, then in the primes, I have the 14 millimeter F1.8 G Master, the 35 F1.4 G Master, the 85 
F1.4 G Master and the 90 millimeter F2.8 G macro lens. Whew. How many years has it taken me to come up with that? All right. So I've got all those, those lenses. They're all G Masters with the exception of the 200 to 600, which they don't make a G Master and the macro lens. Now, I guess they do make a hundred millimeter macro, but I don't care about that. I, the 90 I've had before and I know it's amazing. That's the lens collection. I've got everywhere from 14 millimeters to 600 millimeters. Now, when I said the, the collection is done, there isn't anything else that I'd want. That's not true. And you know that it's not true. I would totally love to get the 400 millimeter F2.8 G Master lens. That's $12,000 and or the 600 millimeter F4 G Master, which is $13,000. Neither one of those is happening anytime soon. So I'm not worried about that. Those are just like, that'd be really cool to have, but I don't need them. I don't need any of these, but you get my point. So I have built over a number of years, this collection of, of mostly G Master lenses. I'm in my own personal little photography videography heaven. I also then have my three camera bodies. I have the A7R4, which is my birding wildlife setup my a7r3 which i got to handle like my walk around and normal shooting stuff and i have the a7 IV, which i'm using for all my filming needs i have found that i prefer the r series of cameras for shooting photos but i love this a7 IV for video and that's the way it's going to stay i don't care that this has bird eye autofocus i didn't find it to really be any more reliable than just shooting with the a7r4 when i'm out shooting birds i don't know why but i get better results with my a7r4 when i'm out shooting birds than i do with this a7 IV. also i love having the 61 megapixels for that kind of stuff because it allows me to really get in there i'm not even talking about moving it to aps-c mode i'm talking about being able to zoom into it because i still think that that is better because then I'm still using the full sensor, but we're not gonna talk about that anymore. So that's it. That's the Devious Monkeys gear collection, that, which doesn't include all the little peripherals and all that shit. We'd be here for days doing that. But again, just wanted to show you my lens collection. You know my cameras now, I have three cameras. That doesn't include the phones, it doesn't include the action cams and all that kind of stuff. Last week you saw what I did with the Forerunner and exclusively I will be using my Insta360 RS in there. And when I shot yesterday here, my wrap up portion of the video, I thought it looked spectacular. I mean, with the lighting on and everything with this whole stand setup, having that set up here, I thought it looked wonderful. The colors were just right, the lighting was right. It was perfect. I loved it. Dig it. I am so freaking thrilled to finally have this gear all set up. I have been going in different directions with taking pictures. I had a great time with my queen this weekend and I got some banger pictures of her when we were out walking around. It's only going to get better. I have it in my head, some ideas for some other human involved shoots. I just have to reach out to those people and get that going. So that is it. That's all you get for today. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, kids, forward and up.